There's all this stuff that comes from the think tanks where they take every possible thing that could go wrong in the world, including nuclear disasters, including getting hit with comets or meteorites or whatever, and they they try to figure out ways that they that this elite could survive. And it's not a new thing. They've been doing this all along. They've had their underground bases all through the Cold War using your tax money to ensure that they do indeed survive. And we've had articles in the mainstream too about incoming uh, possible asteroids and all this stuff. They literally leave nothing to chance. But they also go through everything with military strategy to do with social policy. Because the public have a function that is to be a good, dutiful citizen, at work and consume and do what you're told, go to the army when they tell you to go and fight and kill whoever they want to kill at the time, and then come back and work and pay taxes. That's your duty as basically a citizen. It's an interesting term, citizen, because it started a long time in ancient times too, when money came in and the first cities were formed. Cities could not be formed, in fact, without cash, without money flowing. They can't feed themselves in a city. They live on a kind of supra type of work, which is to do with passing paper around and numbers around and to do with, with companies and so on not with actually manufacturing anything in in itself as such. So this is a system into which you're born, and you've all noticed, I'm sure, that you're rapidly changing. It's all rapidly changing around you, and the big boys are on a move. Uh, And it's a move that was planned a long time ago. They're not um, hurried up because of uh, what's happening in Japan at all, uh, although they'll use that to their advantage. And... They're, they're going ahead with what they said that they'd do with, for instance, the Bretton Woods Agreement Part 2. I've talked about that for a few years because uh, John Maynard Keynes was a guy who gave you your present monetary system and for the governments to adopt and basically the off the gold standards, all that kind of stuff. But he, Keynes himself said that this would only be Part 1 and now, of course, we've got Part 2 coming up. The IMF's been pushing for it. And um, I've talked before, you've heard it in my archive section, where Keynes' speech, his, his last speech was, was um, published, and he talked about the part two that would come in. Now, Keynes was an ardent Fabian-type socialist, and again, I, I have to tell socialists, a lot of socialists don't really know, really know what socialism is. They think they know what it is, and I've talked to many of them. I've talked to Marxists, too, that had never read Lenin or anything else, justice for the working man. That's what they think. And a lot of socialists think, well, it's when government puts the cash that they take off you back into the, the society. And that sounds all wonderful. But you understand, those at the top have a higher understanding and a different understanding of socialism. It was the same with communism. Uh, the Politburo were given one version of what they were working for. The working class were given a different version. And Lenin himself said only the top members were allowed to know the true goals and aims of communism. It's the same with socialism. But we've had enough of uh, slaughters throughout the, the last century, and here we are into this world doing more slaughtering, pretend, pretending with this farce it's for to bring uh, equality and social democracy across the planet. Utter rubbish, the stuff that was put out by the think tanks for George Bush is being used by Obama, who has even been congratulated for, by Rumsfeld of the New American Century Group, who planned all these invasions back in the 90s, by the way, uh, for carrying on the same tradition. But Obama or no, it makes no difference because I don't care if you put a puppet up there, I mean a literal puppet on strings, uh, or even a Muppet, uh, on, uh, that would do the job just as well because they're given their lines to speak, uh, their, the scripts are written for them by professional script writers who have, are more savvy about the agenda than the, the front men who have to read them. And we're on a roll now into this new world order, as they say. The New World Order has been uh, always transitioning itself uh, for, for years into parts. It's, it's partitioned, part one, two, three, four, etc., etc., etc. And I've said for years, uh, this uh, 21st century was to be the new century, the century of change. And that was a term uh, used by academia, talking, uh, who, of course, are all funded by the big foundations which run... Uh, are run on behalf of the banking boys, again, the banking elite families. And the century of change was to bring in a world type of collectivist socialism run by professionals above them, academia, 
who would run the world in a non-democratic fashion. They'd know what was best for us, and we'd simply have the laws thrown upon us, heaped upon us, in fact, and we'd simply obey. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And that really was the goal, too, of Fabian socialism, for those who don't know what socialism really is. Uh, there's still that link up there. I, I, um, I went through the Soviet story, and on there, of course, you have um, one of the founders, George Bernard Shaw, of Fabian socialism, giving his speech about uh, the world to come, the same H.G. Wells in type of utopia where they would, you'd have to go to the big boys and defend your right to exist to them. He wanted to gas all the useless eaters. Back with more after this break. I don't want to punish anybody, but there are an extraordinary number of people whom I want to kill. I think it would be a good thing to uh, make everybody come before a properly appointed board just as he might come before the income tax commissioners and say every five years or every seven years, just put him there and say, sir or madam, now will you be kind enough to justify your existence? If you're not producing as much as you consume, or perhaps a little more, then uh, clearly uh, we cannot use the big organization of our society uh, for the purpose of keeping you alive, because your life does not benefit us, and it can't be a very much use to yourself. And this was actually somewhat subtle for Shaw. He'd also foreshadow some of the worst atrocities in our planet's history. He wrote, I appeal to the chemists to discover a humane gas that will kill instantly and painlessly. In short, a gentlemanly gas, deadly by all means, but humane, not cruel. Hi folks, we're back and we're cutting through the matrix, just talking about the big system and how it's going along the way it's supposed to go because they've been telling us what they've been going to do for years from sites like the Council on Foreign Relations and their Foreign Affairs magazine and other, other articles that they put out there by the big think tanks, the big workers and shakers, for the world that they're employed, of course, by the big international bankers. Look into the foundations of the Royal Institute of International Affairs dash Council on Foreign Relations. See the, the guys who started it up, the Rothschilds, uh, Milner, Lord Milner, and uh, who was German as well. And, um, and of course, their sons, of course, took over. And they actually fomented wars and owned medias to tell them that the science had attacked, like the Boer War. They got the Boer War going because they wanted to grab uh, the diamonds, fields, and the gold and silver and so on. This is factual. It's in the history books. And their own um, uh, historian, Carl Quigley, wrote about it in Tragedy and Hope and the Anglo-American Establishment, the two books that you have to read to understand any of this uh, that's really going on. And, of course, they want to bring in a a world socialist-type system. They uh, greatly admired the communist system because it it created instant obedience. You get things done quickly. Same in China. That's why they love China. And uh, uh, China, of course, gets an order from the top, and everyone jumps into action and simply obeys. There's no arguing like you do uh, in a so-called democratic society. We just get a show off the arguing because they all drink in the same pubs, basically. It doesn't matter what side they pretend they're on. But this is the, the reality in which we live. Uh, a communistic society, they're divvying up the world. They've already grabbed most of the resources of the planet. They're, they're big corporations, which they're, they own literally own the food supply of the world. They own, they're going for the water supply of the entire planet too, the drinkable water. And most folk out there are so brain injured with their indoctrination. And, and there's an incredible entertainment. I mean, who would have thought that entertainment was, was the best drug to keep everyone dozy and stupid as all this is happening? But, they have raised generations on television, and now they're going much further than just TV. And it works terribly, terribly well. Because people will escape from the negative into what they think is the positive, which is actually fiction, escapism, you see. And that's what they counted on back in the 30s and 40s, when big players for the same organization wrote in their own books that uh, they would create an egocentric society, people who would seek pleasure and avoid pain, 
and narcissism will be pushed to its extreme. Well, you've got all of that today, and and yet they don't know that they're that Rome is burning. Basically, they don't know, and they can't imagine it ever happening. It was the same when the Goths and all the other ones invaded Rome. You'll find out if you read Gibbons or any of the other historians on Rome, you'll, you'll find out that. Uh, the people inside were actually partying. Big parties were going on at the time, big balls. And they couldn't believe when they were told that literally the barbarians were at the gate. They couldn't believe it. It doesn't happen to them. And the same thing is happening now as big movers and shakers all outside of governmental offices are working with government to bring in the system because government was bought and paid for a long time ago. If there ever was a free government, it was conquered a long time ago and taken over a long time ago because they're all on board on the same agenda. They have told us we all exist for, to serve the economy. Really? Is, is, that, is that why you exist, to serve the economy? Do you know that's your reason for being? Well, that's what they tell you. Your reason to exist is to serve the economy. What's the economy? It's whatever they say it is. And it also means that they must tax you, you see. They've got the right to tax you. Tax means labor. Labor. You tax yourself when you labor, you see. And they're taxing you. They call it taxes. It sounds better than labor because technically um, anyone who took money off your off your, your labor, which was actually your own labor, uh, was putting you in a form of slavery. If it wasn't your employer, it was then it's a form of slavery, you see. But we're conned, left, right, and center. Anyway, George Soros, as you know about George Soros, he's an incredible psychopath, uh, well chosen, mind you, for his past histories, and picked up by Rothschild, that it was, in fact, who picked him up. He's the kind of guy that they want. And uh, he literally was risen to the ranks of a multimillionaire doing scams and sinking economies across the planet. But he is, is pushing for Bretton Woods Part 2, just coincidentally, that's what the IMF was prattling on about, about a year and two years ago, uh, Bretton Woods Part 2, and I read all that stuff on the air at the time. So, remember, it ties in, too, with this new world order because they've said that the Council of Foreign Relations and governments have said it, too, with, pu- with private uh, public partnerships uh, that um, they're also bringing in philanthropists, big, rich philanthropists, into this new makeup of the, the world to make decisions for us. People you don't elect, you see. And it says, apparently megalomaniacs need schedulers. This is from Fox News. Ask George Soros. The left-wing billionaires helping fund two major conferences start on the same day in two different locations, just three hours apart by car. Two liberal events packed into one long weekend. God created the world in six days. Apparently Soros, who sees himself as some kind of God, needs just a long weekend to start remaking today's world in his image. Now, he's obviously a front too, and he is a front, but he's got the right stuff. He's a pure, pure, utter psychopath. It says the emphasis of both conferences is a familiar one to American voters. Uh, change. Change is good. It, and Soros wants to b- begin by changing the global economy in one event. And the other, they want to change the world and change the media. Back with more after this break. Hi, folks. We're back, cutting through the matrix. Just talking about George Soros, just one player of many front men that are out there who are brought up to be multi-billionaires, and they do work for a master, of course. And uh, believe you me, if he wasn't, uh, if he was was a lone ranger here, he'd be bumped off by much bigger fish than him. 